Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Brother Ara coming to you with another video. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders, great millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who rule well. Shalom to all you Akiyam and you Akwa, those that are hopeful elect, that are seeking for salvation and I want to do a uh, spiritual take on the new movie called Civil War. Just came out. I took time out from work to watch the movie during the day. And, you know, uh, a couple of days ago and pretty much. I wanted to do a response or like a, you know, a spiritual take on it. You know, it is a spoiler, spoil alert. There's only there's no way around it. Um, but I'm not going to dissect, you know, each and every angle of the movie. I more so want to look at it from the spiritual set of lenses as everything pertains to prophecies, you know, um, what I took out of the movie. Now, you see, the movie here says in a dystopian future, America, a team of military embedded journalists races against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. Right. So it's pretty much going into a time of civil war. And, and one of the, the main groups that it focuses on is militia groups. All right. And rebels. So the scriptures talks about that. That's one of the things I want to mention is the division that the Lord is bringing in this upcoming civil war. St. Luke 12 and 51 says, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. The NLT said, do you think I, I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to divide people against each other. So in these times of, uh, you know, uh, a future up and coming near future of uh, societal collapse of America. This is a, a ramp up or an enhancement or I would say intensifying of a future civil war and civil unrest that are, that's about to happen in America and across the four corners of the earth, but mainly in America. So the Lord is saying, look, before my return, things are going to get uh, crazy. Division is going to be at an all time high. Now, when Yahweh Shai comes and establish the the government, right, the uh, governing body from from his rulership down to the order, then there will be peace when all these nations are put down upon his arrival. But leading up to it is going to be division. And the movie depicts that really well. All right. For, for you know, for the most part, uh, how people, everyone was divided against one another. All right. Verse 52 says for from henceforth, there shall be five in one house divided against three against two and two against three. 53 says the father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father. All right. The mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother, the mother in law against her daughter in law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Right? Um, now, I will say there are some things that I wish the movie would have had. But, you know, we all have our opinions about, you know, uh, movies and whatnot. But overall, the edification of the times we're living in uh, was clear. Uh, was, was a decent, for the most part, depiction um, of times to come. The other part I wanted to tap into was um, the amount of death that is going to happen during this time of civil war and the movie did a decent job of depicting you know certain you know moments where you know they showed uh you know a, a bomb going off during a, a riot or a protest and how pretty much everybody that was in that area was deleted you know uh bodies on the ground you know throughout the journalists uh the journals so like it's so much sound going on Put my window up you know so throughout their their journey the journalists you know they would see bodies here and there that weren't buried and that's all scriptural which i'll get but i want to bring this right quick second timothy three and one says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come you know, we go into the word perilous a lot, dangerous, you know, uh, risky, hazardous times are here and it's going to turn up even more when this land is uh, when we enter into a lawless society. All right. A great collapse 
of Babylon the Great, which is the center point, main hub of the Edomites' rulership. So we see now the violence has increased. Like here in Richmond, there's been a team that's been deleted through uh, gun violence, you know, like almost every day of the week. So they got a curfew they're putting in place and we haven't even entered into fully entered into Jacob's trouble yet. So we but we understand through measuring the times as things are partially happening, that perilous times are here. But it's going to turn up. Verse two says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. All these are words that, you know, is worth Google and, and um, you know, researching. Says verse three, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. But the main point was in verse one. And as I mentioned about, uh, you know, seeing bodies upon the ground. All right. Let me bring that out because it's, it's scriptural. Let me see here. No, it's in Jeremiah. <clears throat> the book of Jeremiah, chapter. Yep, 16. Actually, I want to get 25. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 33. All right. I'll start at uh, verse 32. It says. Thus said the Lord of hosts, behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. Verse 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth unto, unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented. So in these times and even when the Lord comes back, it's going to be a, a great number of deletions. Right. And no one to lament for these people like people are going to be on the run when this shit pops off, man. Jacob's trouble and, you know, people uh, in, in fear for their lives. You know, seeing d dead bodies all over the ground, people aren't, aren't going to have time to stop and lament. People are going to be on the run. You know, then you're going to have cannibalism take place. People are going to stop who are hungry and carnal as hell, you know, wicked as, as hell, but hungry. Are going to be eating some of these dead bodies. I know it sounds disgusting, but hey, th this is all scriptural, right? It says they shall be not be lamented, right? Neither care, uh, cath gathered, salaki, neither gathered nor buried. Like now, you have burial services and funeral services and arrangements, and you know, you get a chance to uh, gather together to lament for those that you care about. But in that day, that's not going to be the case. It says they shall be dung upon the ground right dung means shit you see that in a movie right people uh you know who who cross a certain border like it was one part in the movie where uh a man that was just in a military uniform or it could have been a militia group or a soldier most likely was a soldier because his he was the only one that was deleted out of the uh three the other two um wasn't but they they cross they crossed the wrong line. They crossed the wrong line in someone's uh, on someone's land, and the person who uh, owned that land was in a big ass house, you know, uh, with with this uh, rifle, whatever type of weapon he had, scoping out people who crossed that line. And um, his body was was on the ground that of uh, that soldier that was that was shot. No one was there to dig a hole and put him in it. You know, but you saw that throughout the movie, even with the bomb that went off. Right. So these are the times we're coming into. And um, pretty much it's getting ready to be graphic on a whole nother level. But that, that's one of the points I want to make. The other one is um, there was a point in time in the movie that uh, there was, you know, peace. For the most part, it was a city that the journalist was able to you know, uh, stumble upon, so to speak, where they were aware of what was going on in the news, but they were, they felt protected. You know what I mean? They, they didn't have any of that chaos going on in their city. That's 
likened unto the elect. Let me bring that out. Let me uh, make some, so many scriptures I, I'm thinking about when it comes to that. But uh, second Ezra, mm, let me see. I'll tell you what, let me get, let me get the one I'm thinking about first. Psalm 33. Y'all know I love this chapter right here. This, this, these particular verses right here. I mean, I love all the scriptures. You know, I have my favorites, but uh, Psalm 33 and 18 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. You know, so even though that, that town that they stumbled upon in the movie, those journalists, you know, was full of Edomites. You know, you can liken that into spiritually thinking about it, using it for edification. That's how the elect is going to be protected. You know, it was it was peaceful. I mean, uh, business was sort of sort of uh, business as usual. Right. I say sort of because they still had watchmen on top of the tower, you know, who had their their blickies, you know, scoping out any uh, enemy. So but but that that goes to say <laughs> the watchmen are, are, are watching. And, and scoping out the land, letting our people know that the evils are here and evils are drawing closer and closer, you know, uh, towards the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, because it's called Jacob's trouble for a reason. And we know these other nations are going to be, you know, uh, affected by it, you know, but salvation is for the nation of Israel. And the Lord is going to destroy all the rebellious Israelites who don't take heed. But the elect, the Lord has his eyes upon the elect. You know, the angels are around the elect, protecting the elect, giving the elect peace, you know, while the world is in chaos. Right. Verse 19 says to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive and famine. There was a famine going on. You had to go to the government or, you know, certain yeah, pretty much the government in order to receive food and, you know, rations or whatever you want to call it, because it was it was a shortage or it was a. Limit supply, limited supply or access to food and water resources, but not that that town. That town was still kind of running as usual while the world was in chaos. Makes me think about the land of Goshen. You know, the Lord brought the Lord brought all these plagues upon ancient Egypt, but the land of Goshen, which where the Israelites dwelt, were were fine, were protected. Verse twenty says, "Our soul waited for the Lord; He is our help and our shield." Right. That's right. So we we got to wait. You no, know, that's the scripture to always think about is uh, I think Zephaniah three and eight. All right. Wait ye upon the Lord, you know, as he rises up to the prey. So the Lord is going to be that protection and that help during the time of uh, civil war and anarchy. You know, when all hell breaks loose. Right. Verse 21 says, for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name and all these false prophets in there. They're following their congregation. You know, those who know the names but don't use them, you, you can imagine they're going to be calling on those names. Yahweh, well, Yahweh Shai. But the Lord is not going to take heed to them if they're not part of the elect. Because, you know, even though they say, Lord, Lord, the Lord is not saving every man that said that's calling on his name. You got to trust and believe in those names. You know, and that's why we, we're telling our people and we ourselves are, are remembering, right, who the Lord is. Using those names, praying to those names, fearing Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So, <clears throat> I just want to do a lesson going into, uh, you know, that the, the movie Civil War. All right, just a you know quick little feedback or a spiritual um, edification that I got from that movie. Uh, I, I suggest that you watch it. You know, there's a lot of points that I didn't hit, but uh, that you may notice and pick up. You know, but nevertheless, um, we, we're coming into those times, man. You know, the, the, the evils are drawing near and eventually America will be um, at a at a time where we've never seen before a civil war, uh, militia groups going against the government, fighting each other, gangs and people deleting each other over food, fighting in the in the um, soup kitchen lines, you know, taking each other out. All this is about to actually be live and direct. And in America near you and across the four corners of the earth, but America is going to be ugly. All praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Shalom.